Minasan, konnichiwa. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is, I am the president of the Crevice, John Morris. I used to work for IBM in Tokyo. But the Japanese is very difficult, but I can speak English very easily. So, And I will now stop uh, confusing uh, the translators in the back uh, for a minute, because <laughs> they were expecting me to speak English. Uh, but welcome to our session, and thank you very much. And sorry, uh, we're starting a few minutes late with some uh, technical difficulties. Uh, but I'm here to talk about uh, uh, Cleversafe and give you a quick overview uh, of the company and our offering uh, and then turn the stage to our uh, esteemed customer, uh, KDDI. Uh, Mr. Maihara from uh, KDDI will talk a little bit more about the specific implementation of Cleversafe at KDDI. We're very proud of our installation there, and I want to thank Maihara-san very much for his uh, partnership and for joining us here uh, on this stage. Uh, we are a Chicago-based uh, company in the United States. Uh, we uh, have all of our research and development and corporate headquarters locations uh, in Chicago. Uh, I'm very proud that we have a company based on very strong innovation uh, in a brand new area of storage technology. And as a result, uh, we've been fortunate to be awarded more than 350 patents uh, for our work uh, in storage. As a result of some of the uh, uh, work that we've done over the last number of years with our customers, uh, we have secured some recognition uh, by the industry that in this relatively new area of object storage, uh, Cleversafe has, uh, has been awarded a notification as a leader in this space by both the Forrester Group and by uh, IDC. And one of the things which is driving us uh, very dramatically uh, and the kind of the beginning point of our company was the fact that there are uh, the content that is being driven in the web in particular, the individual objects are each getting much larger. So whether it's photographs or video or genomic information, these areas are all getting much larger. And then the network effect of the internet and the World Wide Web is causing these things to expand dramatically in terms of the number. So you have both of these factors, larger objects and more of them, driving a huge amount of data requirements such that the dominant data sources today uh, that are driving storage needs actually are this content-driven or unstructured data. And as you see on the slide, it's already the majority of the data that's being driven for storage, and it's growing at 60% per year, and uh, this IDC chart uh, predicts that by 2017, almost 80% of all data being stored will be this unstructured type of data. So what's the problem? The problem is that legacy storage was all created to optimize storage for structured data, not for unstructured data. We saw this problem and decided that we would start with a clean sheet of paper for the way to design a storage system optimized for unstructured data, the kind of data being driven by content around the world. And because of the storage that we've created, we've been fortunate enough to earn a leadership role. Number one, we lead in scale. We're the only storage company that has multiple customers over 100 petabytes in size. We have a shared nothing architecture, which actually gets more efficient as it gets larger. In addition, we're the number one in security. We encrypt uh, uh, data immediately. It's encrypted both in motion and at rest. And it's done in a carrier grade manner so that you can really rely upon the security of the data. We're number one in manageability. According to Gartner, the average storage administrator manages around 300 terabytes of storage. The average administrator on a Cleversafe system manages more than five petabytes of data. So more than a 15 times improvement in the efficiency with which a customer can manage this data. We're number one in availability. We can deliver multiple nines of availability at an amazing level of efficiency, which typically saves the average customer 80% compared to legacy storage and can even beat 
public cloud economics, as I'll show you in a few more slides. One of the reasons we can do this is our software-only based solution runs on almost any industry standard x86 hardware. So I'd like to give you just a moment's point of view from Sky, a very large media company located in the United Kingdom, and, and a couple of their customers who talked for just a minute or so about their CleverSafe implementation. We were looking at our internally codenamed bulk storage, and we knew this was growing to hundreds of terabytes, petabytes, and a lot of manual intervention for things like DR. And our business was really wanting a 24 by 7 operation. At the heart of Sky, we're about content, right? And as a media and television company, we have a huge amount of unstructured data. And we need a storage platform that enables us to support the data that we have today, but also scale for us so that we can meet the needs of tomorrow. We started looking at object storage, not to a lot of people, some enterprise vendors, some new companies. And we really liked what we saw from so we liked the, the technology. So we started meeting with them and it was a, a very close cultural fit, very, very quickly. When any technology that we choose, security is part of the most paramount decision that we, uh, that we kind of look at in evaluation. CleverSafe's approach to software engineering has been to make sure that security is themed all through their development life cycle. And we can see that in the product today as a customer. It's really simple. We need some more. We buy some commodity hardware and we plug it in and expand the CleverSafe installation. It's really, really simple. So that makes it very agile. And accessibility to, to the storage is all done by RESTful APIs. It's all incredibly fast. No, no need to talk to us half the time. Just go via a GUI interface and they're straight into the CleverSafe technology. They're a brilliant cultural fit. They've worked with us in a number of initiatives to build the product and extend the product, right, to get it right for us. And it's great to see a young company with that kind of agility and that commitment to work with their customers. That's really meant a lot for us. It's a great partnership. So my thanks to Sky uh, for that video. Uh, we'll skip over a couple of slides. This is the wrong deck. Okay, so let me share the summary of the of the financial situation. Uh, the 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 data on the right actually came from the Sky analysis that they completed themselves, and this data will show that that compared to a, a traditional NAS uh, implementation. CleverSafe drives dramatic savings, even if, in the case of Sky, you are also pur purchasing a NAS gateway in order to provide uh, a connection to SIFs, um, you still get dramatic savings with the CleverSafe platform. And on the left side, you see that even compared to the S3, uh, most recent reduction on the S3 side, uh, the savings are still very dramatic for a CleverSafe platform, even compared to Amazon uh, Web Services S3, especially as you get larger and larger size implementations. Because we're at OpenStack, uh, the main reason that we're here, uh, we started two or three years ago becoming committed to the OpenStack movement. Uh, and in fact, um, we, the slides, uh, there we are, okay. Uh, committed to the OpenStack movement uh, w when we announced our Swift uh, interface, native Swift interface directly into our, uh, into our uh, uh, CleverSafe platform. And then later on, we added the capability to use Keystone for authentication, which I think is an important piece of being able to participate in a full OpenStack uh, environment. Um, and we decided earlier this year to join the OpenStack Foundation and begin to work on contributing some capabilities in particular into the Swift interface so that we can help strengthen the Swift interface itself and the way that uh, object storage works in an OpenStack world. So we're very thrilled to be part of the uh, OpenStack community these days. So uh, it, 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 you may have noticed that on October 5th of this year, uh, there was an announcement that IBM and CleverSafe made together. And with this announcement, we, we noted that we had signed a definitive agreement for IBM to acquire a CleverSafe. Uh, we expect that that transaction will close sometime before the end of the fourth quarter. We'll close within the fourth quarter, hopefully within the next few weeks. And at that time, uh, our customers will begin to have an additional set of options for how they can acquire uh, CleverSafe technology. Today, CleverSafe is sold as an on-premises uh, storage solution, a traditional sort of a storage model. But once we are part of IBM, we will work to very rapidly be able to provide access to the CleverSafe benefits via any of the cloud methodologies, either uh, the private cloud implementation on a customer's premises managed by IBM, or a dedicated hardware on IBM's premises, 
or a pure public cloud implementation, or some hybrid between those three cloud models and a traditional uh, 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 on-premises model, which many customers, many large enterprises want this kind of uh, you know, variety or hybrid in their approach. And I'm very excited that our partnership with IBM and becoming part of IBM will be able to provide this kind of alternative and option for our customers. So I'm happy to take questions on any of that as we get to the end of this, uh, uh, this presentation. But for now, I'd like to bring up uh, my friend, uh, our, our customer, Mr. Maihara. Maihara-san has been engaged with us from the very beginning. He's been challenging, he's been supportive, and I really appreciate his joining us uh, today. Uh, he, is the de he is the department manager in the cloud development organization at KDDI, one of the most important uh, uh, companies in the service provider space in Japan. Please join me in welcoming Mari Harasan. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. I am Mara Hara from KDDI. KDDI is a telecom company, and it has a cloud development division, and that's what I'm in charge of. And we also provide cloud services to our customers. So today, I would like to share with you what is happening in the carrier cloud space and um, cover space is a very high quality object storage and specifically how does a carrier use it that's what I want to share with you today and this is the first example of how we use Cleversafe at KDDI this is AU consumer cloud example AU is the mobile phone business of KDDI. Now, AU Cloud Service started in 2012. So the idea is um, you store data within your smart device, such as photographs, videos, and also contact information. And uh, instead of storing it in the device, you can store it in the cloud using our services. And approximately one year after the service started, around 2013, things changed. People traditionally stored photographs in, within the device or within the SD card inside the device. But um, around 2013, people started storing the data on the cloud. And it became really popular. And that led to this dramatic growth. And uh, this cloud service now stores 1. billion photographs and uh, 30 million pieces of video. So this is a multi-petabyte class cloud now. That's what's grown into. But behind this fast growth, there were many challenges we had to face. The capacity had to be increased quickly several tens of terabytes of increase on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, we were using scale-out type storage, but uh, it did come with its limitations. Another challenge was quality. According to our calculation, traditional RAID and storage, if we continue to use those technologies, we knew that once we have to deal with the many uh, project, uh, objects, we knew that uh, we would end up with the worst possible scenario. So it was uh, imminent for us to find a path to better quality in a different way. Cost reduction is also important. Storage continues to increase. We begin to run out of space. So cost reduction was absolutely necessary for KDDI. So KDDI made a decision to shift from traditional storage to clever safe. And uh, there were three main reasons behind this. And the first reason was um, scalability. 
Clevisafe provides truly seamless scalability. Object storage, uh, type storage, come in traditionally two ways. One is called master type, and the other one is called a P2P type. And the master model storage has to use a master node within its configuration. And the master node is in charge of um, controlling where the data gets stored. So you have to ask the master node where the data resides before you can access that piece of data. And it's very easy to make sure that there is a um, alliance, but the master node can become single point of failure or bottleneck. What about the other model, P2P model? There is no master node in the configuration. And uh, depending on the type of the data stored, the position is um, decided uniquely. So fast access po is possible. However, this position has to be recalculated every time, so it's difficult for capacity expansion. So there was limitation with scalability. Now, we decided to use CleverSafe, which takes the best of the two worlds, master model and P2B model. Metadata, the location data, can also be uh, dispersed as information within the storage. So it provides fast access to data, and uh, there is no problem with scalability. And uh, you can continue to increase the capacity to several petabytes without any problem. And in fact, after CleverSafe was introduced, we continue to increase the capacity several times. And we have never experienced any operational issues. Now, second aspect or reason for choosing CleverSafe was quality. So this is a standard uh, support of um, multiple regions, crossing multiple regions. And uh, this kind of storage was not available at the time. In 2011, we experienced a major earthquake in Japan. And the uh, regional dispersion of data was very important. Distribution of data was very important as a trend. And um, KDDI has uh, three different data centers. And uh, in order for, to make sure that there is disaster recovery, we used three sites. And uh, can you count how many nines are listed here on the slide? These are actually 14 nines. Uh, this storage is robust enough to provide 14 nines. And uh, for example, if site 2 is completely damaged, destroyed due to a natural disaster, CleverSafe can still um, reproduce the data completely without anything missing. So that is the second reason why we chose CleverSafe. The third reason we chose CleverSafe was cost reduction. You saw how many nines there were on the slide. So you must assume that uh, so many copies of the original data must be made to ensure high um, reliability. On the left-hand side, we have traditional technologies such as mirroring and copying. And uh, if we do this, we basically need um, four times the capacity of the original data to ensure DR. But with erasure coding, we only need 1.7 times of the capacity of the original data and still achieve 14 nines at the same time in terms of quality. So since we started the AU Cloud service, the availability has been completely 100%. Even with conventional storage, for example, we had to duplicate a controller, and also we need to connect a lot of um, disks, and still we cannot achieve 100% after many years of operation. But with CleverSafe, it's completely 100%. Now, let me talk about the next uh, example how KDDI uses uh, CleverSafe for enterprise cloud service. We have something called KCPS, KDDI Cloud 
cloud platform service, which is um, IaaS infrastructure as a service. So KCPS is the abbreviation. This cloud service is uh, quite unique. Whether you choose public or private, um, both models are available and also This is a carrier grade cloud, so HA function is already built in. So HA is, is provided without fail. And uh, I want to talk about what's on the what's underneath this system. In other words, there is a Taiwanese ODM vendor uh, such as Wistron and uh, Quanta. And what KDDI does is uh, purchase servers directly from these um, ODM manufacturers for this KCPS. These um, OEM vendors became really famous because of uh, Facebook and uh, also large server vendors. But we have been using these um, servers from ODM, uh, ODM vendors right from the beginning. And I know that there are other carriers within Japan that use uh, the ODM vendor servers, but uh, in terms of total number of servers purchased from these vendors used in the data center, KDDI has the largest set of servers. Now, we are telecom carriers, so network is our strength, and this is a photograph of an um, optical network unit. You may think it's actually beautiful, maybe you get, you don't get to see this very often, but uh, this is the unit within the data center. Now, what's really unique about what we do is that we can provide truly direct connection between cloud and uh, these circuits. This is only possible if you are a carrier, and this is what makes the KDDI and uh, KCPS very unique. So the customers would use this a service called Wide Area Virtual Switch, and they'll be able to connect the cloud and the intranet. So this is very safe, and it gives you a huge peace of mind. So within Japan, we are now one of the largest IaaS providers in terms of actual number of servers, for example, as you can see on this slide, and you can see a very dynamic growth there. On the right-hand side, you can see the screen capture of the admin console, which is used to manage the IaaS. And this console was developed in-house using Agile method. So this admin console was um, developed in-house. Now, since we're talking about KCPS, uh, let me talk, uh, talk about the fact that uh, we have started providing object storage service in September with high level of security and a strong peace, sense of peace of mind. I talked about um, AU Cloud, high availability, basically 100%. And we apply the same technology to enterprise cloud. So the spec is the same, 14 nines. And uh, we still use the same model. Distributed storage in three different, physically uh, different data centers. But that's not all. There is much more. We have truly focused on safety and peace of mind. So the network, network is completely closed. So you can use closed network to access object storage. It's not internet. It's a direct closed network connection. And storage houses very important data. So ID and password protection is not enough. Some customers are worried about safety, security. So we have decided to introduce multi-factor multi authentication so that uh, the network circuit and ID can be somehow linked. 
and every piece of data that comes into the service are uh, encrypted and then sliced, which provides a very high level of um, security in terms of data protection. Now, switching gears somewhat, um, let me talk about the future of the career cloud. What is going to happen to this space? I don't mean to preach of preachers. You are all experts here today. But I need to say this. Uh, the environment is already changing very fast and will continue to change very fast. So we need to be agile. Uh, we need to accelerate the speed that uh, with which we move forward and also mobile devices by 2015 we already have 1.8 billion units of uh, smart devices being shipped globally and in terms of network traditionally networks were based on hardware boxes but now we're talking about programmable and software defined network for everything we do so these are the environmental changes that we need to face, but uh, what we'll do is continue to provide safe and secure cloud to support the customers through these changes. Now, in terms of uh, faster speed, velocity, as I mentioned briefly, uh, KDDI already conducts agile development for KCS portal, and uh, you can see the names of um, tools here, Jira, Bamboo, these are some of the newer tools and uh, we do in-house agile development. So we have many scrum teams. I can't even count how many because there are so many. So KDDI has to be more agile in order to help our customers to enjoy an environment that is more agile. We need to change ourselves. Some customers say cloud service is such a black box. So in order to provide transparency, we provide a cloud blog, which shows availability and also all the details of the faults that have happened. All this information is open and available. And uh, here you can see the snapshot of the portal screen, 2015 Q3. we achieved 99.9998% availability for KCPS. So um, that's all the slides and I shared with you how we run cloud service at KDDI, which is a telecom carrier and also what kind of um, piece of technologies support our cloud? And uh, most importantly, CleverSafe is the technology. Thank you very much for your kind attention. We would, entertain, uh, we would be happy to entertain your questions now. So my question is, uh, KDDA has already has many existing storage, right? So how do you integrate that with CleverSafe? Well, integration meaning I, I'm not really quite sure about this definition of your integration yes. well initially we had been using the traditional stretch we kept them as they are 
and the newly stored data only being distributed to Kreba Safe. So that is our first step. In our second step, this traditional stretch migration to Kreba Safe. That data migration was uh, carried out in the second step. That's how we had integrated those two. Clever Safe has uh, this worldwide um, data centers, and you can introduce, implement in multiple regions. So within Clever Safe, if you pick the furthest uh, two data centers from each other, how far are they from each other? With the example of KDDI. Uh, we are distributed within Japan. At the global level, I'm sure Maurice can answer the question. We have uh, uh, customers. We have one customer who's headquartered in the United Kingdom, in the England. Uh, they're running CleverSafe across nine data centers, which are all around the world. Uh, and CleverSafe's technology can handle multiple data centers uh, uh, very, very easily across, uh, uh, you know, even a worldwide uh, uh, single DS net or a single namespace in the storage. Most of our customers are more similar to KDDI, where they're running on three or four data centers within a single country, you know, across the U.S., but uh, from a latency standpoint, it's very easy to handle uh, worldwide latency or even, you know, cross-continental latency within the, uh, within the United States. Thank you for the question. Okay, thank you very much for your attention.